The Golden State Warriors have been banged up down the stretch, but is there a worry about this team in the postseason? Welcome to Give and Go. I'm Madeline Burke, joined as always by Deontay Prince and Jared's Whirling. Guys, four of their stars have been dealing with injuries, illnesses down the stretch, down this last part of the season. Going into the postseason, does that worry you? I think so. I mean, last year we obviously saw the Warriors go 16-1 and kind of, you know, like run this gauntlet on the rest of the league, but that's going to be a little bit tougher to do this year. You know, you have a lot of teams whose records don't necessarily match how they play, you know, because of the injuries. The Spurs, if Kawhi ever comes back, and, you know, Utah, who were without Rudy Gobert for a long stretch of the season, these teams can actually give the Warriors trouble. And, you know, if Steph is out in that first round, things will get a lot uh, more interesting than maybe we would expect otherwise. I mean, the big thing for me, guys, is I think KD at point guard. I think when he comes back with Steph out, KD at that point forward position really facilitating the offense. That's going to be a big facil facilitator for this team. Also, defensively at the five, uh, that versatility, they can switch in so many lineups. So they're still going to be very effective. I think the injuries are actually at a good time of the season. I think Steph out of the first round, okay. Second round, he has to be back, and he will be back. The Rockets are the biggest threat to me. They run their offense so well on the perimeter with James Harden and Chris Paul. Their offense is really at the highest level right now, number one seed for a reason. But those guys are coming back at the right time. I think the West is still, like DP mentioned, you know, Kawhi's out, a lot of injuries. Guys have really taken the back seat. I think the Warriors are still the top team to me. Well, I'm going to press you on that, though, because you said this is the right time to have these injuries. Not right though. But, I mean, when you're coming back from an injury, when you're missing most of the month of March and then coming back either right before or during the playoffs, like, you got to get into a rhythm a mm. little bit before you play these games that count. And if you don't have time to get into a rhythm and you're playing a playoff game right away and you can't kind of find your groove, is there a worry there? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say right before the NBA playoffs is the right time. Yeah. I think, and Steph has had recurring issues with his ankles throughout the, the entire season, and obviously that's more of a concern if this was an ankle situation. Uh, but in 2016, he also had the knee issue, and the Warriors have kind of had to go through this before, and it, it wasn't ideal then. It's not ideal now. I worry about kind of the entire playoffs being clouded by his injury situation and whatever the outcome being like, you know, if the Rockets win, oh, they only won because Steph was hurt. Uh, you know, basically, if these two teams aren't completely healthy right. once they Will get there to be that. An asterisk exactly. There. There's going to be an asterisk for someone. Well, and the, also the other factor as well, too, the difference between this Warriors team and Warriors teams in the past is their bench is not quite as elite as it has been in years past. That's got to be affecting this team especially with dealing with these kind of high-profile injuries, right? Yeah, Madeline, obviously some of the age there, David West, Livingston, those guys are pushing the 30s. Yeah. So Iguodala. Iguodala, exactly. So that's a, that's a big factor to me. But, you know, I go back to this experience of the team. I think Steve Kerr is a really smart coach. I think they have the versatility, like I said, defensively. KD, I think, changes the entire game plan. He's still going to – he's coming back very soon. We know that from the rib injury. He does so many things offensively, on defense as well. And not to mention another X factor, the Oracle Arena, right? I mean, hard to win there. I know the Rockets have that number one seed, but I have also a big question. Can the Rockets or any team beat the Warriors in seven games with all that they run at you with misdirections, cross screens, and transition off defensive rebounds? I don't know. I, that's going to be a lot of. That's going to be a big test, energy-wise, efficiency to stop that. That's the biggest thing I, I will right. I look for. I'd be curious to see that too. But again, also, are the Warriors going to be the Warriors for right. seven games if they don't have the full squad available? Right. As well? You need Steph in order to run all that misdirection. If he's not fully healthy, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Right. Otherwise, you're settling for more mid-range jumpers. The assist levels go down. The move, ball movement, the off-ball movement goes down. Everything changes when Steph's not. And on crazy the court. stat too. Yeah. The Warriors are the leader in mid-range shots this year. I don't know if you saw that story recently. That's a really interesting stat. So hopefully they can facilitate more on the perimeter with Steph back. That's going to be the biggest thing. Can they get those threes rolling to match the Rockets' efficiency from also downtown as well? Well, will we see Golden State playing deep into June, or is this going to be an early exit? A lot of time will tell. Continue to check out the crossover on SI.com NBA for all the latest on and off the court.